There are several different types of men in this world. There are men who dream and never make it off their couch. There are men who dream and fail. And then there are men who dream and change the landscape of this world. People like Bray Wyatt. But what about you, man? That's what I want to know. Aren't you tired of feeling unwanted? Aren't you tired of feeling like an outcast and being stepped upon? Well, then today is your day. Because today is the day that Bray Wyatt decided he was going to change everything. Today is the day that hell froze. Today is the day that pigs fly. Today, me and my people looked at fear right in the eye and we said, Mr. Fear, sir, you are a liar. Today, I want you to go and I want you to tell all these so-called world leaders that they better heed my warning. Take notice to Bray Wyatt. Because today is the day that Bray Wyatt decided to Bring down the machine. Bring it down. 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 Today, we say goodbye to NXT. For now. But if you need me, I ain't hard to find. All you gotta do is go look up in the sky and follow the buzzer. <laughs> we have, we have a whole lot of superstars on this stage here tonight. But I want y'all to know one thing: this is my house. And when I say who's the world attack skills and vocabulary too, all the hits in the distance. All brand new, you're through. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. So who? Fuck your beef, no relief. I step on stage, girls scream like I'm Keith. Everybody, what's up? It is Ray Time Pro Wrestling. Keith and Keisha are the builder again. Keisha, say hi to the people. Like I'm doing this wave. <laughs> I'm doing this wave. I always have like a new way of saying hi every week. I don't know why. I need to stop that. I really do. Yeah, so, kind of don't translate the audio. Uh, <laughs> we, we go live on video. I, 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 I'll let you bring back the wave. Okay. But, All right. Well, hello, everybody. What's going on? We are broadcasting live for Podcast Studios in Atlanta, GA. <laughs> Here to bring you another fantastic week in the world of professional wrestling. Ah, uh, wow. All right, Keish, we've been trying to figure out how we're going to rock this show. So let's do this. Uh, this has been a interesting and tough week in the world of professional wrestling. Um, we will begin with, uh, by the time we finish recording and have produced last week's show, um, we got information of the passing of one Chavo Guerrero Sr., um, for those of you who are not aware who Chavo Guerrero Sr. is, he is the father of Chavo Guerrero Jr. Um, he is the oldest brother of one Eddie Guerrero, uh, the eldest son of uh, Gory Guerrero. Uh, so he was the first one of the Guerrero kids to actually get into the wrestling business. Uh, he... If you are a West Coast kid, you probably have a lot more reference for Chavo. Uh, if you are younger, under the age of like 30, your introduction to Chavo is Chavo Classic from his 2004-2005 uh, run in the WWE when he managed his son, Chavo Jr., and also won the Cruiserweight title for a little bit. Uh which is actually still on record as the oldest person who ever hold that cruiserweight title. Um, but yeah, he uh, most nobly known for his feuds on the West Coast with Roddy Roddy Piper over the NWA. Um, I want to say American Heavyweight Championship would be the belt, which he won like fifteen times, something crazy. Uh, wrestling out of NWA Hollywood and 
I th- which that would have been uh, Judo Gene LaBelle's territory. Uh, came out of the El Paso area, uh, wrestled in the AWA with uh, his brother Mondo and Hector. Helped train Eddie. So, with that one, and at, at first, that's, I think that we, we thought that's all the bad news that we had for you to start this week off, but that was not the case. Um, former WWE superstar Nicole Bass passed away uh, yesterday morning at the age of 52. Um, Attitude Era fans will be a little bit more familiar with Nicole Bass. Um, Keisha, how would you describe Nicole Bass? I would describe that. Uh, I would describe, I've been doing that all week. I would describe Nicole Bass as, uh, who was a good word? Let's see. Tall, buff, strong looking. <coughs> Nicole Bass was awesome. For the short period of time that she was in WWE, WWF, because that's pretty much what she participated in. Mm-hmm. Um, she was actually pretty interesting, to say the least. I mean, I don't know if they did too much with her that I agree with, but personally, I thought Nicole Bass was just... Nicole Bass was, was a, another level of greatness in, within herself. Like, when she appeared on the scene, it was really questionable about why she was there, but at the same time, you know, nobody really knew who she was. Nicole Bass was an incredible bodybuilder, who transitioned into the wrestling world with her strengths and I think personally had she had the chance she would have did great trying to wrestle with the men you know she could have been another China if she was given the right opportunities but um, yeah. I, I mean, don't know what kind of background like it was what was going on backstage you know as far as her uh, wrestling training and all that kind of stuff but yeah, um, I thought Nicole Bass was great, either regardless of uh, her short time in the in WWF, and you know, I, I it's funny because she just had to she had a unique look to her as far as wrestlers go, well, female wrestlers go, but you know, it didn't take away from her personality. So, yeah. Um. That's very interesting that they never really put her in China on opposing paths. You know what I mean? Right. Ideally. Um, generally, they do that immediately. Uh, Nicole was trained in 98 at the ECW House of Hard- Hardcore. So she was trained by ECW, of all places. Um, like you said, career bodybuilder. Was a bodybuilder since 1985. Um has a lot of high places and a lot of national international bodybuilder competitions uh she first really rose to fame when howard stern of all places uh she was a participant in the howard stern pay-per-view event uh the miss howard stern new year's eve pageant she was a member of the whack pack um but yeah she catapulted that used that got to the wwe um like i said was a, a part of the attitude era uh, probably most notably was paired with Val Venus during her time there. I think that's probably the biggest angle that she shot. Uh, like he said, I'm not sure what happened backstage, whether it was politics or whatever. You know, who was angling for what and how that ended. But, um, yeah, so we were saddened by the news of Nicole Bass. And then... Um, you 80s WWE fans I'm sure your childhood took a monstrous hit this morning uh, with the passing of George the Animal Steel <coughs> uh, we had learned probably yesterday that uh, he was having some health problems and he was in hospice care I mean that was the word that had got out yesterday I and mean, then just the day after getting that information and you know we was hearing that he was in a bad way and he was able to communicate that. Like, George was on Twitter and stuff like that. Next thing you know, we hear that he passed at the age of 79. Uh, 
Probably one of the more interesting careers in the world of professional wrestling. Um, a Michigan man, a Detroit guy, went to Michigan State. Keish, do you know he used to teach and coach football at high schools and wrestle in New York on the weekends? No. No, I did not. Because the WWWF, Vince Sears territory, was a New York territory, right? So, living in Michigan, it doesn't really cross over, right? So, right. the TV didn't cross over at that time. Because in the Detroit area, that was uh, Dick the Bruiser's area, um, the original Sheik, Eddie Farhat, who you may know as Sabu's uncle. He also trained Rob Van Dam. He ran the Detroit territory. So, they had that TV at that time I mean cause you gotta remember there was multiple territories at least like 34 functional territories in the country at that time so they had that TV so the people in Michigan would never see him on TV it was strictly like a New York thing New York Connecticut that whole the Northeastern Corridor everything down to like D.C. so he would go do the shows he would perform he would do like three shows on the weekend and come back home and coach wrestling and I mean and teach um just a little bit known he was uh raised in Madison Heights not even in Detroit but Madison Heights um he played multiple sports he went to Michigan State he played football of course in Michigan State um didn't go you know he, he played tried to play in the UFL but he had some knee problems um he got his masters from Central Michigan so definitely a Michigan guy through and through, man. <laughs> but yeah, wrestling coach, football coach at Madison Heights and Madison High. Um, he actually became a member of the Michigan Coaches Hall of Fame at one point. Just to give you a synopsis, uh, which is crazy because one of his biggest biggest events was WrestleMania three, which was where. In the Pontiac Silverdome, our hometown. All <laughs> right. Got to lay it out for you. So it was about 20 minutes up the road. Not even 20 minutes, because he's he from Madison Heights. So about 15 minutes up the road from his house, you know, where he was living and growing up and teaching and stuff like that, man. He at the Dome. And everything, the Dome was everything at the time, because that was the place in the area. I can't even make you understand what the Dome was. To the area, right? Unless you're just from there, you know. But mm -hmm. I mean, everybody on TV saw it because I mean, it was the biggest event and it was the biggest WrestleMania up until last year in Jerry's World. Um, but yeah, man, he was part of that uh, Savage Steamboat match that goes on in Lore. Um, he had that thing for Miss Elizabeth that they played up. Um, the guy was an incredible performer. He was magnetic with the kids. Um, they played him as a heel at one point in his career, but, you know, as the rock and wrestling era came, he just became lovable George. He chewed on the turnbuckle, threw stuff everywhere. I mean, he was a great guy, man. But, yo, back in the day, like I said, he used to work on top with Bruno at the garden, just to let you know how much money he was making. Oh, shit. But Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. He had a very unique character. I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit where he was managed by Captain Lua Battle, and the doctor was trying to help George, and he ended up scrambling George Braid even more. That's go. Cool. You can check that out on YouTube. But yeah. I can't say enough about George the Animal Steel. You know what I mean? Uh, what a guy that I actually looked up to incredibly intelligent cool guy to talk to uh, there is an interview done with him on the Underscoop Fire podcast um, I think you should still be able to find it I'll probably provide the links for you guys at some point on the Ring Time Pro Wrestling site and on uh, my fa on the Facebook page and on Twitter so look out for it but yeah George would definitely be missed man um, I 
I don't know. Like, there's nothing mm-hmm. to say about that. Um, right. So, Keith, you ready for the, the lighter part of the show? I am. Yeah. I definitely I, I, am. I, I didn't even want to check the news before we started the show. I was like, man. What 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 else could go down? Um, but let's recap Elimination Chamber. Because it's an incredible Elimination Chamber. Keith, it's just been an incredible week in wrestling. We got two new women's champions. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes we do. Two two new women's champions. Um, two. We got a new WWE champion. Uh, he got the whole world in his hands, Keish. Right. He got the Keish. itty bitty babies in his hands. And, I, and I'm here for it, right? Like, it, what is going on with the WWF making sense? I don't know, but I can tell you this. Our predictions for Elimination Chamber Elimination Chamber were all the way off. I mean, all the way off. I think out of everything we predicted, we might have gotten, like, too right. Like, I was sitting there trying to keep score. I was like, uh. Well, I mean, all the ones that we agreed with that I can remember, I'm like, um... Well, here's the thing. This is what I've turned with the WWF. <laughs> hey, I don't know what they going to do next. I booked these shows as if I was running the show. If the outcome comes out different, then that's fine. But how we will book these pay-per-views as we go through is fantasy booking, right? Right, right. And this is how I would tell the story. Now, not even this is how I would tell the story. This is how I think they might tell the story. Right. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. Because if I was how I'll tell the story, a lot of these conclusions would have happened way beforehand. But, it's their story. It's their party. They can cry if they want to. Uh, they have a log range plan I think we're starting to see that log range plan and we're going to hear for Wrestlemania right, right so with that being said Elimination Chamber WWE Chamber pre-show Mojo Rowley defeats Kurt Hawkins makes quick work of it not a surprise right. Well, I'm actually happy about that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, Becky I like Lynch Mojo. defeated one Mickey James, uh, which was a really good match, Keish. It really was. I, I Very totally solid. enjoyed it. Uh, do you realize this is the main show? We had three women's matches on the main show of a pay per view. Yes, we did. Oh, it was awesome. But can you understand where women's wrestling is at right now compared to like a year and a half ago? Yeah. Um, a year and a half ago, women's wrestling was awful. Because <laughs> when we get to Raw, we're going to be talking about a main event match. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like I, wa- I want you to let it all sink in here. Like Raw, we're talking about the main event. But... Becky had a really good compelling match with Mickey. They told a good story. Um, Mickey has really got her legs back up under her in this WWF game. Um, I, I think she's, she's still taking a while to reconnect, right? Right. Because what you got to understand with Mickey is that a lot of these fans just don't know her. No, they don't. You know, during that TNA time and stuff like that, they just don't know her. Right. And SmackDown, I was telling somebody that's at work today, SmackDown generally t- trends younger than Raw. Yeah. So those fans really are a little bit more disconnected from things that were like... And this is, Mickey is not even really as much attitude as just the immediate post-attitude era. Right. You know that crowd of people that was coming through right after the attitude, the Cena's and that kind of thing. Yeah, the ones people that migrated that, in. Yeah, in that class of like two thousand two. Yes. Yeah. So, 
So it, it's 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 something that they would have to like actually go back and look at because if they don't, they're not going to really understand who Mickey James is and how she became Mickey James in the first place. Um, yeah, I mean, but I think she she she's doing a real good job getting herself back there. That is true. But I, it, 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 to me, it definitely goes to show to as a performer who she is and what she can do. Because I think the people are connecting and they're like, whoa, this girl crazy. And I'm like, you don't know the half. All right. <laughs> exactly. Like, I do not know the half at all. <coughs> I mean, you know, somebody will say that to you. They're like, yeah, man, no, I knew her back in the day. No, she, she <laughs> really crazy. Right. It's funny because um, that's, that's something that has been told to me. It's like... I'm like, oh man, like, that girl is weird. Ooh, honey, you should have seen her like six years ago. <sighs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, this gets worse. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's those are those moments when you really just got to be like, all right, I need to run. It's time to go. Yeah, for those that haven't seen Mickey uh, before now, like, you really, I mean, like, WWF Mickey. Mickey. I'm not talking about TNA. TNA Mickey was she was pretty awesome, but we're not talking about hardcore country, okay? We're talking about crazy psycho lunatic Mickey James, who was uh, the stalking fan, and then like turned like just turn turned six heads like Mickey. Like that was Mickey, y'all. If any of y'all have not seen that, you you need to re- you need to hit the network. That's all I'm saying. Hit the network around like 2002, and then you'll start to see the emergence of her. Like hit it around 2000, like early 2003. I'm telling you, you don't even you won't even know who the hell. You'll understand it more at that point. Like the one I see now, she's not as crazy. Like in my mind, she's not as crazy. She she's off. Now don't get me wrong, but she's not as like crazy as as the one from from before. But of course, it's been years on years. So I'm I'm telling you, like. But I I all in the same. I still love Mickey James. I do. And I have to honestly say, I wasn't too pleased with the ending of that match. I, I wasn't. I didn't like the whole roll-up thing. You know, I don't, I think they get a little annoyed by the roll-up. Because it's like, really? yeah, sometimes I just get a little too annoyed with the roll-up. Because it, it just happens too much. It's like, oh my God, y'all could definitely have ended that better. But, you know, sometimes I understand it. Like, but there's times when it's like, oh my god, like they couldn't just have ended it like regularly. So I don't know. I just I wasn't expecting it to end like that, and I definitely didn't like the fact that it ended like that. I don't know. It just didn't fit for me. Like I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't pleased. I was actually expecting a lot more than that. So maybe my expectations were a little too high for the ending of that. But I, I don't know. I mean, once, once, but then once we get further into this show, then because I got some frustrations that I'm, I, I have to honestly say, Keith, you might be a little slightly annoyed with me for a second because I, I'm definitely not feeling it. Like I'm just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so we'll we'll talk about it when we talk about SmackDown. Yeah. Um. Apollo Crews and Kalisto defeat Dolph Ziggler in the handicap match. Uh, Ziggs beats down and uh, tossed tossed up Kalisto to start the match, but uh, that didn't stop uh, Apollo Crews from going to work. And did Kalisto still showing up later and didn't win in the match, only to get beat up by Ziggler afterwards. Right. And uh, to see uh, 
Apollo Crews get attacked and almost get his ankle broke and have the crowd cheering for such injury. Um, yeah. Hey, Arizona. It's Black History Month, man. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Stop being assholes. Like, can we Just not saying. do this in February? Y'all I cheer? But, but, you know, hey, it's Arizona. That's where Chef Joe is. Right. That's where John McCain mm-hmm. from. Well, John, I ain't gonna say that right. I won't put John McCain in this in this category of people I'm about to slander because he's actually a good guy. But these motherfuckers who didn't vote for the King holiday back in the day, you know, that's them. So let's just just put that there, right? Last state they ever mm-hmm. had to adopt the King holiday as a national holiday is Arizona, right? Just just some history. Um, American Alpha defeats the Ascension, the Usos, and Breezango. In the tag team uh, turmoil, solid win. <coughs> uh, the Usos got mad after they got eliminated and tried to be punks and attack American Alpha. All right. American Alpha still was able to overcome the Ascension because I mean it's the Ascension. Oh, the Vaudevillians was in there too. I mean I just forget them because they just seem so unimportant. Um. Wait, they were in that. I was sitting there watching that. They're a part of turmoil. I don't know. I they, they, they listed as part of turmoil, but I I don't remember. I don't remember them being in there. Okay, maybe That's they did. Did that happen? No, maybe it did it. happen, and we both were just like xing that out. Like I don't know. I, don't I had to. Re- I guess I had to go back because right. I don't. I don't know if that happened. <laughs> yeah. We we could deal with like, that. We, um. <laughs> Nikki Bella and Natalia ends in a double count out, which I was not expected, but I'll go with. Can I can I say that I'm loving this right now? Really? You know, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. At first I was hating it. Like I mean, I totally was despising it. But I have to honestly say, them adding the whole, hey, let's just have them beat each other down every time they see each other aspect to it, I think it's kinda awesome. Um, I personally believe that it it makes it a little slightly more interesting than what it was before. Because before, I mean, of course, it was Natalia taking a whole bunch of, like, obvious and uh, repetitive jabs at Nikki. And, you know, Nikki, like, oh, you're just jealous. You know, it was just sounding really cliche shit. But... I like the fact that they're fighting all over the place. Now, that to me makes this extra interesting. So, the way this match ended was perfect for me because I was like, yes, they're going to beat the shit out of each other before anything is resolved. I'm all in for it. I'm sorry. (laughs) I know it's a little violent. I don't care. I'm all up in for it. I am. I am thoroughly enjoying this. Um, and I, it will, especially when we talk about SmackDown, like, well, once we get to that later, how how um, Natalia attacked Nikki in the back, you know, after the post match interview, and they end up fighting to the point where they got makeup all over Maurice, and it it's awesome. I think this is great. Personally, I am all I'm all looking for it. Less talking, more fighting. That's what I'm talking about. To kick each other's ass every time you see each other. When she breathes in your direction, just smack her. Like, that's, I'm for that. I am. Sometimes you just, it just got to be that way. I'm sorry. Like, sometimes you don't need the, the interviews with each other and the promos and all of that shit. You know? Sometimes you just need to interrupt each other's matches and just smack each other around. Like, that's, I'm for it. Because for some few, it works. For some, it doesn't. You know, you just gotta pick and choose when to insert this into. It. You know, it's like there's so many times where it just doesn't need to happen, but for them to, this is necessary. That's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, <clears throat> I'm personally for it. I, I am thoroughly for it. Like it's. Because to me, this is what make this is what's making it interesting. I mean, think about it like this. Because <laughs> I've been watching. I told you I've been watching Total Diva. So now this is how I look at it. Right. Um, 
these are like two of like the bestest of bestest of friends that are now at each other's throats that obviously can't stand each other one attacked the other and ended up getting her ex out of one of the biggest matches of her life and then uh played it out like she was her friend and oh I didn't do it and I wonder what happened and now I ain't gonna lie we all know Natalia did that shit okay but <laughs> nonetheless um two best friends that are now that can't stand each other at this point I mean Nikki has a has a saturated hate for Natalia and vice versa for two separate reasons it works for me like I understand the fighting all the time and I'll smack you every time I see you. It's understandable when you when you really start to think about it. So I'm for it. I'm for it. I'm for the double count out. I'm for I'm all I'm all in for it. Mm. Trust me, y'all have my support on this. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm with it. Then it kinda of stuck me into that one, people. I'm not going. I, I've been sucked into that that storyline a little bit. Like I'm with that. So, uh, actually, sounds slightly personal. Anything going down today, Keith? You you okay? <laughs> I'm good. I am good. Trust me. Yeah, I had me. my chocolate last night. I ate six tacos. I'm good, man. I'm I'm, I'm I am a okay over here. So somebody gave me I got a free lunch twice and I'm 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 Gucci. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just so I I mean I I just it's just for me. Um and I don't wanna say this so long so I'm gonna make sure I use my words wisely, but for me, when it comes to the female storylines I feel like at times creative just doesn't put in enough work with them you know what I'm saying like I know it takes for the wrestlers to actually to make the storylines come to life and I get that but I feel like sometimes with the women get sold short you know and I feel like at times it's really just thrown together because with the men you can see where the effort is put in you could see where it's inserted like you know where they they even when they throw something together for the dudes like it's you could see where the effort is put in to try to make this work with the women I feel like if you're not if you're not a champion or the contender then it's kind of kind of like uh, a side thing almost it's like all right, well this is what y'all gonna do make it work and it really just feels like they have this to hold whatever they've been thrown what's ever been thrown in them they have to hold it together and they have to put it together and it's all up to them to make it work and it's like okay so with stuff like the whole the Nikki Bella and Natalia thing it's like if you don't watch Total Divas and if you don't like if you won't get it you won't get it like you really won't because you'll be like okay where the hell this come from um if you're watching it from the start of like survivor series you'll you then it'll have an understandable like tone to it but if if you if you've been watching total deals like i have like i've i started from episode one season one so like if you watching it like I am, then you'll understand it from a totally different light, and it starts to become like a whole nother thing. But like other than that, you know, then the stuff just seems like okay. How the hell did that happen? When did this happen? Like, why is this happening? And it's so I get excited when it's stuff like this happens because I'm like, hey, you know, it's I'm I'm sucked in. I'm drawn into it. Like. Right. We when we get the raw, like I I I'll I'll jump ship for a second. For like a slight second. Charlotte has some of the best effing promos I've ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> like I love her. 
I hate her all the same, but mm-hmm. I love her still. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's stuff like that I get excited about when it comes to the women. And yes, I am. I, it's because I am a woman. I'll admit that. But <laughs> at the same time, what do you expect? I am a female, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna pay attention a lot. I pay attention just as much to the women's wrestling as I do the men. It's not more because. Of course, I'm going to want to see a representation of the uh, of the female gender on the battle in the down the ring. Like that's just why not, you know? Right. So no. yeah. So Nikki and Natalia saying, I hope this play. Now I'm not saying like it needs to be a WrestleMania match or whatever, whatever. Because I'm pretty sure like it might not make it that far, but yeah. Right. Like, WrestleMania um, gonna have two hours of pre shows and four hours of damn content. I, they they they'll probably get a match. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Here's try to figure out WrestleMania. Still hurts my head. Um, <laughs> you know the flip side, Randy Orton defeats Luke Harper in a one on one match. No big deal. Uh, that that match was actually pretty good to me. No, it was. It was actually a pretty good match. Uh, it. Orton came with his RKO and did what he had to do. Uh, oh, which reminds me, I'm—I just want to kill JBL. Like every RKO ain't, ain't out of nowhere. Like I'm sorry, I'm just—I understand that's Randy Orton's thing, you know. But every RKO ain't out of nowhere. Let's just put it like that. Yeah, he set you some know? of those up. Right, exactly. And it's clear that he set him up. RKO out of nowhere. No, JBL, we knew that was going to happen. Like, come on, man. <laughs> no, JBL. <laughs> start doing that. No, JBL. <laughs> like, I Here's swear to you, that's what I say. Every time he says that, when it doesn't apply, I'm like, no, JBL. Well, it's like we our knew pre- that was going to happen. It's like our comments prior to the show that the people didn't hear off air. Uh... There's four people there, man. We got to figure that out. Why the fuck do we got four people sitting there? That, you know, I I started to think of it this way. To try I to think give it three is excessive. You know what I mean? Right. Like, when they went to a three-man I, booth, I was like, Ugh. Sorry, people. Grew up on two. So, a three-man yeah, booth to exactly. me is like, oh, what the fuck are you doing? It's too many you voices. Know? Like, I, I feel like you need to have... Color, play by have. play. That's the formula. That's it. That's it. Guess what? Like, why do you have a third person? NBA and, color play by play. That's they do every broadcast. Football right. color play by play every broadcast. Wrestling for the longest time color play by play. Stop being stupid. Okay. As long as I can remember, that's how it always went. That's how it always went. The only time I can remember there being. Anything different is ECW with uh, Joey Styles being the only person. Like that's it. Like other than that, I don't, I don't know. So for there to be three people, three on Raw and four on SmackDown, this is a, this is excessive. They even added a third person to NXT. Why? I just don't get it. Why? You don't need three commentators at the table. It just doesn't need, that doesn't work for me. Because now you got three people up there arguing with each other and just all over the place. It's annoying. It's annoying. I'm I'm sorry. Yes, I am against uh, Byron Saxon and David O'Tunn. Like, come on, people. Let's just be honest about this situation. No. I can't. And it's not even... It's just because... They just don't fit for me. Like, I'm not... I'm just not feeling it. I'm just not. I feel like they'll be better off in other roles. Like, David, I feel like, will be better off in, like, a managerial role. You know what I'm saying? By, I mean, Byron, I feel like we'll be better backstage. You know? Like, I feel like he will be incredible out doing the interviews and stuff like that. Like, <clears throat> I think these will be better fits for him. 
But like for them, for for there to be four people at SmackDown's commentator table, period, is ridiculous. I feel like they added Tom Phillips to give a SmackDown representation on NXT when he commentates, but that's retarded because it's like you don't even need that. Like if that's the case, cut someone from Raw and then have them on NXT. Like just just stop. What? Why is all these people? all over the place why are all these people all over the place giving their two cents everywhere I can't take it I really can't cause you got them all jumping over each other and then it's crazy cause you have you have the only person at that at that table for Smackdown that is like the heel person is JBL yeah like he's the only one that's like like if you're gonna have four at least have two of them agree you know like everybody it's, it's those three and then it's JBL JBL's the only one that's like cause he, he was right for that and blah blah blah, blah and everybody's like no and it's just kinda it's confusing I'm confused sometimes cause it's too many people there like it really is I don't I just I can't deal. But nonetheless, like <laughs> JBL right. needs to stop telling everybody that Randy is doing RKOs out of nowhere. I agree. Um I just anyway. Now for the fun part of the show. Uh new women's champion. Let's get to my favorite part of the show. Yeah. yeah. Na- Naomi yeah. pinned Alexa Bliss to become the new uh SmackDown women's champion. Uh, I did not have this in the office pool because you never expect uh, the black kid to win, but Naomi pulled you know, it off. Key, yeah. Neither one of us did, and I honestly will admit that neither one of us did. But um, when I tell you I screamed when she won that title, when she hit they hit that three count, and I was and I hear her music, I, was like, ah. I wasn't even at home, and I was screaming. I was screaming. Okay, like I was clapping with her music when she came out, and mm. when they hit it at the end of the match. Okay, mm. I was way too excited. When I tell you I was the glow at that moment, like forget feeling it, I was all in it. Like right. I was bathing in it. And <laughs> I was like, yes. I'm just saying, it's Naomi. Naomi, people, if you haven't noticed, has become one of my favorite wrestlers. Like, period. Okay, so yeah, black girl magic all over the place. Let's yeah. just be. Like I said, yeah. I was shocked they went that direction. Um, I thought that was just kind of like a placeholding event, and I hope she holds on to the belt going to WrestleMania. So that would take her to Orlando in her hometown, and uh, which of course she would lose because WWE does not believe you in you winning in your hometown. <sighs> but of course not. Yeah. Uh, but we'll deal with that later. Um, also, the biggest shock of the night, Keish. Bray Wyatt wins Elimination Chamber. Um, pitting John Cena and AJ Styles. In that right. order. But, because uh, when he pins Cena, it's a new champ now. That that we know. Right. But then exactly. it's him and AJ one-on-one. And um, I thought they had very good chemistry. They put together a good match. Um, I thought Barry Corbett had a nice chamber. I thought he established himself as like, yo, I'm a part of the top of tier of this brand now. Right. Dean was Dean. Um, Miz was Miz. I thought, you know, I thought overall it was a very, very good match. And we entered the era of Wyatt. So now Randy Orton wins the Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble makes perfect sense. Remember, we was confused about that three about three weeks ago. Right. Um, oh, we were. And but no, this is the it's, we got a collision course set up, and you'd wonder how uh, one side would feel about it. No. Well. We don't have to worry about that any longer because now we know what's going on. So, yeah. it is what it is. 
Uh, uh, um, dealing with Bray, uh, I think we've got a champion that we have not seen in a while, right? I mean, he's a baby facing character. I mean, he's a baby facing application, but not in character, right? Like, in theory, he's supposed to be a heel, but the fans love him. And that right there is something that we have not seen or been faced with um, in a while. Like, I, not since, like, Undertaker have we really crossed that kind of threshold. But the guy is an incredible performer. Um, he put on a great show. And he's he's ready for WrestleMania. Right. Uh, that. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Um, with that being said, Keish, we're rolling downhill, so we're just going to roll right into Raw, right? Right. Then we'll hit our break, and then we'll come back and finish up with SmackDown and uh, the news, because the news is going to be long. Man, you know, I forgot all about Animal Punk ass. Now I'm looking at the notes. But that's the. Wait, what? Real Warrior Animal. It, it's it's a long story. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I call him a punk ass. Y'all you know, probably like, oh, man, Animal Crazy. He'll probably try to fight you. Look, man, I ain't scared of no fucking animal. Uh, <laughs> even even at 50, man, I, I, I ain't scared of fucking animal. I'm sure he didn't do enough royalty. When I kick him in that bad knee. Look. Anyway, look. Because he, he going he to say some shit that pissed me off. But let's get to Raw. Um, Roman Reigns uh, comes out after Stephanie McMahon um, decides she will open the show and uh, she does her impersonation of Teddy Long because Teddy Long is going to the Hall of Fame I can take that out of the news and notes too um, so congratulations Teddy oh, right. But, right no Steph just no yeah here's the thing um I am very, very uncomfortable with all the white people and the impersonations of Teddy Long. Right. It's so awful. Like, I mean, really, if I hear one more person, I don't care who you... I'm not that comfortable with black people. Yeah, do it, Teddy Long. But white folks, really, really uncomfortable. It just, just, it it just (laughs) doesn't come out right. It was like, right. whoa, are we just trying to pay homage or are we making fun? Because we are on some dangerous territory. And exactly. I'll go, I would just leave Teddy Long alone. But, uh, I'm not saying. Congratulations. Like, Teddy. y'all have to remind yourselves there is that thin line, and honey, you are, not, you are tap dancing on it. Congratulations to what, yeah, Mr. Theodore to. R. Long. You are a Hall of Famer. Uh, right. But we'll go in with that. Uh, but yeah, Roby comes out. He is up in a match with the Bullet Club, Bullet Club, a.k.a. Uh, Anderson and Gallows, which he wins by DQ because Anderson and Gallows puts the boots to him. Uh, but then, of course, Roman ends up with a chair so he can stand tall. Uh, so, Keish, Emelina debuted on Raw this week. That was the worst part of my week, I swear. That was horrible. What the hell was that? Like, I'm sorry. I have to ask it just like that. What in the hell was that? I I I'm, uh, I can't. I don't know. I, like, here's the thing. There's there's rumors going around backstage why they scrapped Emelina. Uh, but it just. Ugh. Ugh. Well, my thing is this, and this is just me. Okay. Go for it. Um, this is me. If y'all spent all this time advertising it and, you know, doing the little short promos and during shows, because this has been going on for weeks now, okay? <sighs> Just for her to come out, do that, and then that's it. Like, if you were going to scrap it, then you should have just scrapped it, okay? 
Like, remember when they had to cut all those promos for Rodis Clay and how he was going to be like this huge, mean, like, he was going to like tear your throat out type dude. And then when he debuted, somebody called my mama came on and he, he come out dancing. Like, to me, it should have been like that. Like, that's to me, if you were going to scrap in Melina, then you should have had an alternative, like, setup for her. Like, don't just have her come out there, like, presenting herself, like, what you had advertised, and then it be, it dies in, like, two seconds. It was retarded. It was a waste to me. Like, I didn't understand why all that even happened. You know, it was like, what was the point? Because if you if you were going to scrap her, if you were going to scrap the whole idea, if you were going to just, like, if you had changed your mind about it, then that's fine. That's completely understandable. But what you don't do is continue to go with it and then, like, just completely destroy a segment of the show like that. Because, I mean, I'm using really strong words right now, but that was horrible. No, no. Uh, it was just horrible. No, it was, it was terrible. Uh, here's the thing. This is what the word on the street is. Apparently, the WWE wanted her to play a throwback role, like a cat or a sable. Um, her role would have been focused more on TNA, the in-ring performance, which conflicts what they're doing with most women right now on the roster. Uh, the producers were fans of the concept, but don't think that Emma could have pulled it off. They said they might revisit it with another talent, but they don't think she was capable of doing it. So they will put her back in her old package and send her back out to the ring at some point. But like you said, 17 weeks of doing one thing and setting it up and laying it out to not do it is crazy. Right. Like, I, w- I would give it a shot just on GP. I mean, exactly. But they didn't even do that. Like, they were like, oh, let's let's advertise this for 17 weeks and then have her come out for like two seconds and then just end it like that. No, mm-hmm. that was, what was the point in all that? Like, that was retarded. Like, to me, you should have had her come out. Um, hell, if anything, have her come out as Emma and then cut a promo as Emma and destroy Emmalina and the whole idea of Emmalina and then be done with it. You know, I would have found that more impe- compelling and more understandable than for you to do that. Because that was just ridiculous. It was. That was ridiculous. Like, there was just no point in having her out there. That was a waste of money, a waste of time, a waste of resources. If you were just going to, if that was the end, end result. Mm. It was because the anticipation was <clears throat> was too much for there to be nothing. Because mm. that's exactly what it was. It was nothing, and it was just like why? Because I ain't gonna lie. I was waiting for this whole Emilia thing to play out just to see what 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 it really was. Mm. But why even change her character if that was all you was gonna do with it? You could have kept it where it was. Because I don't know too many people will agree with this, but I actually liked Emma. You mm-hmm. know? I did. So I'm like, I don't really understand what was the point in changing her in the first place, but I guess there's somebody in the creative that knows more than me, so, you know, whatever. But yeah. changing, changing her, changing it all to this old Emmalina thing was just... That wasn't the direction to go with it, so. All right. Um, Emelina's program sucked. Uh, Kofi Kingston defeated Bo Dallas. Uh, Jack Gallagher defeated Noam Dar, which just really didn't matter that much to me. Uh, yeah. Br- Braun Strowman defeated Mark Henry Keish. It, it looked good uh-huh. in the beginning. But... After a while, Mark couldn't handle it no more. Um, 
if you keep beating the world's strongest man, does it, does it matter that he's the world's strongest man? Because I'm kind of tired no. of seeing Mark Henry get his ass beat. Yeah, I am too. I, I think he's I mean, an overused the only prop. Thing they use him for. Yeah, yeah, he's an overused the prop. It's like, yo, if you want the wins to matter over him, he got to beat people. Like sure. him, him losing should be like, yo, just something y'all do. Like, oh, it's the next man up that we try to bring up the thing. Let's put him against the world's strongest man. No, no, no. Fuck that. Some of them people need to lose. Like, you got to add some credibility to this. Intimidation is destroyed when you have a losing record. Like it, it just doesn't, it doesn't apply, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it really, it just doesn't. Like if he keeps taking these L's, like he's no one's gonna take him seriously. It's like Mark Henry. Oh, are you serious? Like didn't he just get beat like three weeks ago? Like no one's gonna really like be like, oh man, Mark Henry, dude, man, I don't want to face him in the ring. You know? No, it's not gonna happen. And personally, I don't think they need to be beating up on Mark Henry like that anyway. I just, I'm just, I hate the misuse of this man. It's just awful. I can't. So, I was whole, I was against the whole Braun Strowman and Mark Henry match in the first place. But, you know, to each of them, whatever. Um, he beats up Roman afterwards, and it's like, okay. And, <laughs> you know, um... That whole situation is just, mm-hmm. I guess that whole situation to me is just kind of, eh. Yeah. Eh. Um, <laughs> so. More exciting news. Uh, well, oh, also Roman shows up at the internet match just to get beat up. And uh, people say a thank you Strowman again. So more of that. Uh, Can you just be healed already? Yeah. Samoa Joe had a wonderful sit down with Michael Cole and I want to say Joe might be the coldest heel on the roster he is hands down because I was like damn I believe this alright like he is going to drag some people up his words make you make you wonder like okay does people need to do people really want to be in the ring with this man because no. He sounds like he's out to like wreck things. No, no, he is so. out he's out to lunch. Um Sammy Zayn decided he was gonna talk smack about Samoa Joe. Oh, Lord. Well, well here's the thing. Joe did call him out first and say, Look, man, I ain't like Sammy Zayn, I ain't just happy to be here. Sammy Zayn like, man, don't be calling my name out there like that, da 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 and then next thing you know, Joe was in that jaw. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And it's like, okay, man. Um, Jimmy, you should have chose your words wisely. That's all I'm saying. Like, you know he started it on purpose. Don't do that. Right, right. He did that on purpose. Yeah. So, oh, Keith, why you... I'm looking through the show notes, man. You didn't include the, the Festival of Friendship. Yeah, I, I kind of... Glossed it, but that's where we gonna go here for next because, uh, yeah, there was the festival of friendship. We had Gilberg show up, which I thought was funny, but apparently, uh, well, think about this. Triple H talked to Kevin Owens before we went outside, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did he say that got Jericho ass whooped? I, you know what? I don't know, but if I know Triple H and uh, the Triple H that we've seen over the years, you know what mm-hmm. that. He probably said something to him along the lines of, if you being with him and his embarrassment, you need to get rid of him because he's going to bring down your whole fucking career if you keep hanging with this man. Sounds about right. So, yeah. So, he was probably like, you know what, dude? Bye. And that's what caused... But he destroyed... He mauled Chris. Like, that shit was brutal. I was like, uh... Did he really have to do all that, though? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. he, uh, I, whatever Triple H said to uh, Kevin, uh, got the brakes beat off of Chris, and it was just ridiculous. I was like, God damn it, man. But, I mean, of course, uh, Kevin wasn't looking like a credible champion anyway. Well, of course, to some, it was like, well, he still holds the belt, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, but 
who was in his corner every fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Well, majority of the time that he had title matches. You know what I'm saying? Who was there to give the help of hand? You know, what What has happened in all of his title matches for, for mm. the most part? You know, so it's like, okay, I want to see this man win a title match by himself with no help. Like, if he can do that, you know what I'm saying, then fine. He gets the credit. But right now, it ain't happening. And he probably mentioned that to him, too. Right. Triple H probably mentioned that to him, too, and was like, you got to get rid of this dude. Yeah, like, yeah, no. I can see that, that being the angle. Uh, the rumor and the idea is that maybe they do a faction where it's Triple H kind of running the show, and then you got KO and Joe and maybe somebody else up under him, kind of like the NXT guys, and they'll use the NXT guys kind of like in an invasion kind of thing where, like, this is the guys I've molded and this is the future kind of thing. Right. Oh, the thing Ooh, is, you got know. I mean, because if you get Joe after the like the U.S. title or something, because he has to think too, like you got to account for these people, but not everybody needs a belt. You know what I mean? Right. But, right. And you always had an underlying tension between Joe and Kevin that you can roll into a match eventually at some point. Right. Exactly. So, I uh, I think this I think this is going to work. Um, and we predicted, like we said a long time ago. Joe and Jericho are going to not Joe I'm saying uh, Kevin KO and Jericho are going to meet at Wrestlemania I right. just it was just how you going to map it out at some point and KO was mad as hell when he got off YouTube <laughs> alright like, he was like what the hell so that oh, was that man. Um, we got a break coming up well no sorry we did not talk about the most important win from Raw uh, main event, Bailey defeats Charlotte for the women's championship. So Keisha Bailey. Charlotte is Charlotte just set to lose on Raw all the time? You know, I'm starting to see that. I really am. Like I feel like okay. I feel like that's just how they got Charlotte set up. It's like have her drop belts on only on Raw, but make sure she never loses a pay per view title match. It's like what the fuck? Can we can she at least like I'm ready for Charlotte to take this pay-per-view loss. I really am. I, I am. Yeah, I mean, because it's the thing. I, if she if she comes back and wins the belt at Fastlane, I don't I don't know how to look at this, right? Right. Because it's starting to feel like it's something written in our contract or some shit. Like I don't know what the fuck this is, but it's really starting to irritate me. Because it's like, okay, <sighs> yeah, she has won every single title match at every single pay-per-view she's been in. Okay? And it's like, now I understand that you want to set a trend. You know, you wanted to make it look like something. I get that. Right. But don't have her drop the belt at on Raw and then like two weeks from now win it at a pay-per-view. Like, it's annoying because it's she's, she's a four-time women's champion and the women's title has only it hasn't even existed a year yet. Like, yeah, how I mean, is this possible? You know, yeah, what I mean, here's, like, that's the thing. Like, she's <laughs> she done, she done lost the title like two or three, and that's the funny thing about it is like she done lost it overall, but won it back at the pay per view. It's like I think when you hot potato with the belt like that, right? I, nothing good can come from that to me. It doesn't because. What ends up happening is the belt doesn't look like anything. It ho- you devalue it when you just throw it around like that. Right. You know? Like, it's it was one thing when you had her with the belt and that was it. You know? Like, right. that was fine. That was fine. I, w- I agreed with that. But when you tossing it back and forth, between her and Sasha, then it was like, okay, this is too much. It needs to stop because it was it was too much. Like <clears throat> neither one of them needed to hold the title that many times in a short period of time. Like it's yeah. fine for both of them to be multi uh, a multi champion, 
It does, that is completely, I am not against that. I am completely with it 100%. I, I'm, I'm totally get it. But for, for it to happen within a six month period, no. Nah. There's no reason you should be a three time world champion, a world women's champion within like a six month period. No. Like, there is no excuse for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. And then for some of these title changes that happen within a two to three week period, why? Don't yeah. keep having like like every almost it felt like every match they had with each other was a title match. Oh, we're gonna do this on Raw, and we're gonna do this on this pay per view, and then we're gonna do this on Raw again, and then we're gonna do it at that pay per view, and then it's okay. It's too much because I can see it now. Bailey is the champion right now. Then, of course, Sasha, I mean, Charlotte has her rematch, rematch at Fastlane. Right. So, of course, if Charlotte's not losing that pay-per-views, she wins at Fastlane, she's the champion again. And then they do it again on, like, Raw. And and if, if it were to change hands again, then nine times out of ten, Bailey would be champion again. Right. Then they go to WrestleMania, and then Charlotte wins again. It's like it's like okay, this is a repetitive, predictable cycle that needs to end. Like this cycle needs to break. I need Charlotte to lose at Fastlane, just for the simple fact that this is just too much. It is. It's too much. So, and and don't hand the title off to anybody else. Just let it stay on Bailey's waist and go from there. That's it. Because if you don't, then it's just going to become more and more and more uh, ridiculous. Right. So, because I don't agree with it. I'm sorry. Like, as much as I love Charlotte as a wrestler, because I don't take anything away from her. She's awesome and great. But it's just, I don't like, I just don't like this cycle that they've developed with her. Oh, because Charlotte's like what sixteen and oh at like pay per views. Yeah. What? Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you mean? What is that? Like, seriously. Like, how is it? How is it that she's won sixteen pay per view title matches? Like, what? Yeah. There's people that's been wrestling ten years and ain't never did that. So it's just kind of like, what's the fuck? <laughs> well, it's got to be big match. That's what she is. She's gonna be big match Charlotte. And that's that's gonna be her yeah. rep. Is that she is the big match, and you gonna have to deal with that. Like when there's a when you at the top of the food chain, and nobody messing with you. Problem is that she dropped the belts on the TV show every week. Uh, exactly. Not, you know. Uh, Period. Yeah, we'll check it out though. Um, there is a rematch coming, and you know we'll go from there. Uh, with that, now we will go and uh, get ourselves set up for the break, and then be back with news and recap SmackDown. Cool. All right. So with that, I'm going to give you the lyrical style of one brain This world has an infection, and the virus is the human race. And through all these troubling times, John, it makes all the sense in the world that you would paint yourself right in the middle. I mean, after all, what would the world be without its hero? What would the world be without its knight in shining armor here to save the day? But people like you, John, you're hollow. You're full of empty promises. You promise to save these people. You, pro you promise to keep them safe. You tell them that everything will be all right just as long as you're around. <laughs> liar. You're a liar. You are a liar, John Cena. This is a terrible world. A cold, cold, dark, and a lonely place. 
You stand for these illusions, but I stand for everything that is real. Now you say the future has got to come through you first. And I couldn't agree more, John. <laughs> Please, excuse me. Allow me to properly introduce myself. My name is Bray Wyatt. And we are the Reapers that bring death to this era of lies in the morning. All right, we are back on the flip side. Um, with all the hassle and things, I forgot that we have a birthday segment that comes up every week. And we talk about mm-hmm. birthdays. That's so right. That's like a thing, Keish. Um, we are in the middle of February already. Um, yesterday was the 16th. Rich Swan would have been celebrating a birthday. Uh, there's nothing going down tomorrow. And then Monday, uh, February, no, I'm sorry, Sunday, February 19th. Yes, Sunday, February 19th. Um, There's like four birthdays. Uh, El Torito celebrates a birthday. Uh, Ty Dillager celebrates a birthday on Sunday. Uh, And one Big John Stud, uh, WWE Hall of Famer, celebrates a birthday on Sunday. So that is it for the birthdays. Now, Now we'll get to the news. So, oh, Lord. Keish, the news ain't heavy. We got we got past the heavy. Um, I'm gonna give you some exciting news and fun news. The WWE Network finally got Chromecast support. That's awesome. <clears throat> I, I, so awesome. Also, like a year too late because I don't need Chromecast no more. But I, I'm glad that All I right. still have one. But. I would have loved for them to do this a long time ago because it plays better through that, you know, different apps on your tablet or whatever. And I'd have just threw it through to the TV or the Chromecast. But WWE didn't work that way. Out of all the apps, and then they finally, after being on the message boards and getting cussed out on Reddit, they finally got it. Now, will I use it? Probably not because, like I said, ah, I got so many devices now where I can just pull up the network. I don't need it, but still. Right. Um, but I realize it's not about me; it's about the people, and people you now can use Chrome, use it with Chromecast. Um, it, it's a little bit even simpler than how you do use New Japan, because with New Japan you gotta still go to the web browser, log in, pull up what you're gonna watch, then go to, you know, hit the little thing at the bottom. You already, it it pulls it in a secondary app called New Japan, then it connects to the Chromecast. You know what I mean? This is pretty much instantaneous. Um, you got to update the app. So if you haven't updated your app in like three days, go to your app store, hit update. You'll see the Chromecast icon. Because they said they had rolled it out, and I'm like, it ain't rolled out on mine. They had to do the update. <laughs> so make sure you do the update, and it'll, it'll roll out. Um, we talked about uh, everybody passing away. Um Keith, the WWE is issuing a rule book that they will Bye. sell in stores. I don't know. It's the official rule book, like the official wrestling rule book, I guess. Uh, Daniel Bryan will write the forward, um, but it'll be an official rule book. I don't know for fans that better understand what's going on in the ring or whatever. Maybe they are feeling like they're not getting the top office talent, per se. Right. I must say I don't understand it. I just I I read that earlier and was like, what's the point? I just I am. Mm-mm. Uh, I'm not with it. So uh, I I mean I don't get it. Like, don't spill all your tea. Like, come on, man. Like, Jesus. 
can you not put everything out there like that? It's bad enough. It's bad enough that there are leaks of, like, commentator notes and, like, uh, things that have been established since, like, 2010. You know, stuff. come on, man. Everything that happens behind the scenes or just rumored about or whatever does not need to be put out there. It just don't. Right, right. So... I don't. I don't support this whole rule book idea. I don't know what even supposed to be in it, what it's supposed to consist of, how this is supposed to go. All I know is, it just don't need to happen. That's just me. Like I, I personally think they need to scrap that idea and move on from it. So, but of course, I feel like WWE is just gonna find any way possible to make money off of. The things that well, it depends. The fans don't demand that. That that right there, I'm pretty sure the fans mm. didn't even ask for. So let's not even get into that. No, no. But we don't, we don't have to get into I that. I digress. Yeah. So yeah, I I just feel like it's not a good move. That's all. That that's that's pretty much my best way of putting. It's not a good move at all. It ain't a good move. Well, you know. Don't do it, though, Um, <clears throat> I have to wonder how big it's going to be. Because I don't know if you've ever seen the encyclopedias, the WWE encyclopedias. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually own one. So, uh, or like their books the the books they put out like of, right. like I, I there's one I've seen at Bronze and Noble of their top 100 matches and like the 50th best moves and, you know stuff like that they actually make these into books and they're huge um so I have to wonder if it's gonna look like that or if it's gonna look like just a regular novel or you know what what how how is that gonna go right uh, with that being said, um, next up on the docket, uh, Road Warrior Animal has stuff to talk junk about the Grammy performance. Uh, he told, though, he looked at that, uh, performance for Tribe Called Quest, who had an incredible performance, Keish. Yeah, they really did. They, they said, we the people, I'm like, whoo, boy, y'all want to really get deep time, make no space program for niggas. Cause that's my son. <laughs> right. Alright. But anyway, I digress. Uh so they performed. They brought out a lot of people from different communities, kinda just kinda show we all are what. Well, Animal was not one pleased. He said we are a country really? that Yeah, um that we should not you know, embrace that. He was like, "Yo, where do y'all think all the drugs is coming from?" And da da da. da. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm gonna go get you the actual quotes because it's just so. Just so I'm not misquoting him. Hey, oh, he apologized the next day. Apparently, but of course, because. That's how that always goes, right? Yeah. Like, you say something derogatory, and then the next thing you know, you... Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, really? Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. No, you meant to say that, but then you thought about how it's going to, like, quote-unquote, ruin your reputation. So then you decided, oh, I'm going to take it back, and I'm not going to actually say that that's what I meant to say. But... I know I meant to say that. Come on, bro. Get yeah. it right. Right. Like, because pretty much this is what he wrote. After reading my post last night on the Grammys, I see that I misspoke and I'm embarrassed. What I wrote is not what I was trying to get across. What did he write? Having people of color, Muslim and Mexican, come on stage? Are you stupid? Can you not see where all the drugs come from, from the southern borders? All the radical Islamics that promote death to America? Okay. 
A uh, few things, Keish. One, you should know where all the drugs came from because you and your tag team partner did all of them. I know, right? <laughs> right. Secondly, right. how fucking racist do you got to be to blame all the drugs on brown people? You said Muslims, Mexican people of color on stage. You like fuck all people of color at this point. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. Just like the apology was half hearted. I think he wanted to say I only meant Mexicans. Mm. 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 But you know how I feel about racism, Keish. I have yes. to fight it yes, at I every do. turn because they may not be talking about us now. But they'll be talking about us tomorrow. Oh, you know it. So that that just I, I couldn't believe it, man. I was reading it and I'm like, fuck an animal. That's why I said I could probably kick him in the back of the knee. It is all good. But it just <laughs> I mean, dog, you would have lost two right now because you took two of your chair shots to the head. Don't go out there and start pontificating your views on the greater scheme of uh social you know, social issues. That's what I'm saying. There's but, a, there has to be a lane for you to stand. But because Animal is a white man who paid his face and along with his psychotic friend found a way to make a good living for himself in America, they don't understand that that's a lot of that has to do with privilege. You know what I mean? Because with a tag team pair like Doom, people are like, oh, that's too fucking scary. You know what I mean? But yeah. they were like lovable biker boys somehow. So right. just ah, uh, he wants to say he's not a racist. He's not a bigot. I'm gonna tell you what I think. I I think his son James read this and was like, "Dad, you gotta take that shit down." And he apologizing now, but I, cats are the bad but- man. Right. My thing is, he posted it already. So well, he posted it and he put people, out there with his truest of emotion. Right. People have seen this. They have read it. Someone yeah. probably. I, tell you, I should have double check my post. Uh, so you you try and blame spell check, bro? You try and blame spell right. check on racism because that's new. Right. Well, that sounds like some old Trump shit. I'm just saying, like. That sounds like something 45 would do. Because it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, you know, I kind of misspelled that word. No, no, you didn't. You didn't misspell that. You spelled that just fine. Mm -hmm. You knew what you were saying. And you said it. Like, that's the whole thing. You know what? I would have more respect for him if he actually just owned up to the shit. Like, I personally wouldn't have respect for him at all just because now I know he's like full-blown racist. But I would at least you know, would have respected him owning up to the shit as opposed to being like, man, I mean, I didn't really mean to say that and it, it really didn't come out the way it was supposed to or, you know, no, 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 dude, no, dude. You said that. You said it and now you want to lie and act like you never said it. No, you said it, own up to it, go home. And know that this is you. This is you. This is how you are. This is how you act. This is what you say. It's you. Because regardless of if you kept it up or take it down, you're still saying the same shit behind closed doors. So, mm-hmm. what the fuck? And we now all now know the kind of things that you say behind closed doors. So, don't try and act as if this is going to be the last time. Like, No. No. So, yeah. <sighs> Just whatever. <laughs> right. Like, I can't. I can't with people like him. I just don't even try anymore. Because that you can't give folks like that your kind of effort. You can't, you can't give anybody like that any kind of, like, any kind of acknowledgement or effort because that's the whole point. I just feel like 
I might even want to sit here and give him, you know, oh, I just feel like he wanted some attention speaks. Like, no, he just, he's just a horrible fucking person. That's all that is. So. Yeah. So, that there's that. Um, I really don't have a lot left in the news. Um, so, we'll just go into SmackDown, Keish. SmackDown. Smackdown. Uh, Bray Wyatt opens up Smackdown. the show. New uh, WWE champion. And he gets confronted by John Cena, who knows how to mess up a wet dream. And uh, <laughs> one AJ Styles. I'm going to tell you my biggest problem with the Cena promo. That fool a hater. Right. I mean, right? hater McHatenstein. He was like, yo, you're chanting, you deserve it. I don't agree, man. Nobody deserves anything. You work hard in the WWE. Man, shit your ass down. That shit was awful. I was like, damn, They was saying you deserve it, bro. Let that man have his you deserve it moment. How many times he gonna have that? Exactly. Cena just jealous? He uh, he sounded like a jealous girlfriend. Like, so is this how you're gonna treat me? But if you don't fit in... Like you haven't, you doing too much. I swear he's doing too much. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just I thought that was like man, Bray was killing it, man. Here comes Cena. Hey, hey, hey. Right. I'm like all right. Exactly. Right. AJ yeah, no, segment. It's funny because I like the directions. I had actually liked. Uh, I appreciated the directions Cena's promo was going into, but. Now that now that I listen to I listened to the one Tuesday and I realized that they're kinda of just all over the place. Mm. Because it's half it's half I don't believe, you know, um never give up and you know, all that kind of stuff. And the other half is just kinda of like oh well we all know you ain't shit, but I want to sit there, stand out here, and, and kind of talk to you so you can be relevant. Like that's pretty much how I feel when I hear his phone call. Sometimes it's like, damn, you, you gotta be like that, though. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so American Alpha defeats the Ascension. Uh, the Usos have a little promo in the video monitor for him. Uh, I like those day one hoodies. Those are kind of hot quiche. Um, uh-huh. I think Hill Uso works. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Like, works is an understatement. Like, understatement. Hill Uso is everything. Like, mm. if they. If there was anything they've done to improve their chances of, like, definitely having themselves out there, it was turning heel. Like, that was the best move at where I feel like for their career right now. Like, mm-hmm. they don't need to be babyface no time soon. Like, I think they, they need a title run. They need a title run, you know with this as it goes on right now. You know what I'm saying? And they need to continue on this path that they are on right now. What they're doing with them is incredible. I am for it. I am so for it. Yeah. Um they cut their poem in the back and I was like, Yes, kill it. Kill it, please. Like it was greatness. It was perfect. And I don't feel like it was not a step out of place. You know how sometimes these can go, they can go a little bit, they can be weird. Right. Like, they can be, like, super weird. Yeah, like, this wasn't like that at all. So, I'm definitely, um, I'm I'm here for Hill Usos. Like, those two are just, they make this work. They do. They make it work. So, uh, and and the fact that they weren't, they didn't come out, they didn't attack nobody. See, this is what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about Natalia and Nikki. You know, 
for them, fighting all the time works. For something like this, that doesn't even need to happen. They don't need to touch each other until, like, WrestleMania, if that's when they going to, next time they're going to fight or whatever. Like, I don't need them to be in, like, any kind of tag team jumping each other or nothing. Like, they need to just... They need to just stay separated, talk all the shit they want to, and call it a day. Mm-hmm. Like, that to me, that's what to me works right in this situation. You know, for Nikki and Natalia, they need to just beat the shit out of each other every time they see each other. But for, like, um, for them, nah, American Alpha and Usos, they need to just keep talking to Mac to each other and just keep it moving, you know? But I love the strongness and and uh, the Uso words when they talk about going for the titles, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's believable. People should be singularly in focus, right? Right. Um, everything else is cute, but you're there to be a champ. You, you are there exactly. to win the world title. That is that that is your sole purpose. If you're not there to win the world title, you, you're wasting your time and whatever it takes to get there. Um, right. American Alpha, great looking team, very smooth, nice moves. Um, I think they understand their roles in the formation. With Jeff, I'm DJ. Jazz, I mean, Jazz, I'm DJ. Uh, Jeff, yeah. you're the rapper. You know what I mean? I say Jazz and Jeff like they ain't the same person. Okay. Mm-mm. That's when you know it's getting late. Um,. Baron Corbin attacks Dean Ambrose before his match with James Ellsworth. Uh, Ellsworth was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Ambrose was looking for Corbin. Mick made a match. Uh, key component with that one is that, hey man, mess with Curl, with, with, with good old Curl Warner, you're going to be on some surprises. Yeah. But I loved it. Um, I loved it. I, I hated seeing Dean get beat up like that, but Baron was on it. And. I, I I am a Van Corbin fan. Like I, I have to honestly say, I'm all for this person. So, like it was that was greatness to me. But it was just it just sucks to see Dean get beat up like that. <laughs> like that was awful. But oh god, I can't stand Jail. I was waiting for somebody to like beat the shit out of James Ellsworth. I was like, man, now we gotta miss it. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> I'm just saying. And I was like, "What the? F- oh, and they ain't gonna beat down James Ellsworth tonight? Damn it! I mean, can't somebody just go out there and hit with their finisher real quick? Like, can we just get that? Like, where's the Miz? Yeah. Can Can the Miz come out and hit him with a skull crush finale? <laughs> like he did on that ramp when he had team with AJ Styles. Like, I just, yeah, I just want to. It's just one good time, you know. That's it. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I guess. So yeah, Baron gives the blues to Dean. Uh, Mickey James d- defeats Becky Lynch in a rematch from the, the previous night. I mean, uh, two nights ago, pay per view. Keith, your thoughts on Becky since you was talking about her last segment? Okay, so <clears throat> here, here's to me, this should have been reversed. Like the match they had at Elimination Chamber should have been the match on SmackDown and vice versa. Um, But the fact that they had this match, like, repeated it on SmackDown the the next, that two, I mean, this past Tuesday night kind of irked me a little bit um, because of the simple fact that you just had this match on Sunday and you already are doing a rematch. Why couldn't the rematch wait? like another week or two you know what I'm saying if you were going to do it on regular television anyway why why couldn't it wait a week or two and then on top of that like to me the matches were in reverse I felt like the match that they had on Smackdown should have been the match they had at Elimination Chamber and vice versa because it would have it still would have made sense it still would have made sense because Mickey would have took the first hit. I mean, no, I'm sorry. Mickey Lynch would have took the first hit. 
then Mickey would have took the second, and then, you know, so on and so forth. So why not do it that way? I mean, either way it works, but it's just, to me, that just would have been the more logical thing to do. Um, with Becky and Mickey, it's, they're, they're, the whole entire thing is, is already kind of weird in itself. But this ain't helping. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way that they have their matches done with each other is just not helping. Like, they don't need to face each other on Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? There's too many women in the women's division for y'all to even have to face each other. So, I guess we'll just see how this goes and how that's supposed to be, but... Mm. So, but those were my thoughts on Becky and Mickey. Like, I was pleased with the ending of their match on SmackDown. I was. I was thoroughly pleased. I was thoroughly pleased with it, and I definitely think that that should have happened at pay-per-view as opposed to on SmackDown Live. But I don't do these things, so. Mm. But that's my take on that. Now, I want. I will tell you something that thoroughly pissed me off. And that is the entire Alexa Bliss interrupting Naomi thing. Like, no, Alexa, I hate you. <laughs> like, like, please don't interrupt our new women's champion when she's trying to talk. Thank you. Like, I'm just really like, no. So, um, we already know that that rematch is coming. But Alexa was just kind of like, oh, let's just make it next week. Like, no. No, Alexa. What, like, what if it doesn't happen? Like, uh, so, I guess that's just kind of my take on that whole situation, but it could change. No, no doubt. It could change. Um, Alexa Bliss confronts Naomi uh, during her championship celebration. For what? I don't really know. Boo. Uh, I'll say this though Alexa is money on those promos Like when she gets on Talking Smack and stuff like that I give her credit She she believes All right. She believes um, Main event Ray Wyatt Defends uh, the title against John Cena and AJ Styles in the triple threat Thanks to the Smackdown general manager Daniel Bryan Um Neither one of those guys got their one on one return match and they end up in a triple threat because of that. Right. Uh, right, 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 right. Bray is successful, Keish. He overcomes the odds. Even with the, uh, even after getting beat up by Luke Harper in the beginning. Yeah. And, and even with two incredible men uh, breathing down his neck and, you know, kind of kicking his ass like he he did it man yeah he I I, I believe in Bray yeah I'm I mean I think, this. I, I think on this show we've always believed in Bray Wyatt like I think we've always been proponents of like this dude is talented this dude is rocking the mic um we gave him two promos on this show just because like the guy is killer and what's the right guy? I don't know a lot about it but man, he makes you believe like oh wow this guy really might have a cult over here. But, <laughs> right. like I said, I think he's entered a realm where he has a, he's a baby face by appreciation. Like, people just appreciate everything he does and breaks the tape. He has a good motor for his size, too. Like, exactly. the guy can go. So, it creates this thing where, like, man, he does all of this. This is, and he's more of a relationship to every, you know, to the fans a little bit. Like, they're like, yeah, it's my kind of guy. But um, uh, World Street is that it was seen an idea to put him over. What? That's World on Street. Um, what? Oh, but here's the thing too with that. I mean, I think he's probably done that for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether WWE do it or not is another thing. 
uh, I think they realized like with the well, like the Nexus, right? If Wade Barrett right. would have won. They could have got so much more out of it, right? So you can't just keep having people fall to the king. Sometimes they got to lose, they got to win. Right. Uh, exactly. And then for the the other person who don't make it, they could do things that'll put them in a spot to you know what I mean cash in another way. Right. So uh I mean that's that um, it was something else I think I had on the docket or something that I forgot about um, Keish anything you want to contribute um let's see I did like the I, okay so I know this is going to be included in this but um, I did like like love love that's the better word I use for it I did love the backstage between Nikki and Natalia and Daniel Bryan that was kind of awesome. Um, I am definitely, I definitely like the way that they're taking this direction with Baron Corbin. Um, of course, we can already see what's going to happen next with him and Dean Ambrose. Um, I, well, there was something else that I wanted to point out too, but I just can't remember what it was. Because the whole show to me was a good in itself. Um, I, I was definitely supporting it. Oh, oh yeah. What is up with Naomi's knee, man? Is she gonna be all right? Like, do we have any news about that? Is that a no? Like, um, I mean, it's an obvious brace on it, but so far she's performing on it, so I don't. I, I can't really give you anything. Yeah, I mean, she. I have to honestly say that. Um, I didn't, you know, no one can really tell like she was injured. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, well, I personally couldn't because she performed greatly um, Sunday night. So there was no indication to me that she was even injured, let alone uh, needing a brace. So um, I definitely give her props for that. She gives me major kudos. Um, I definitely... I am wondering, like, where are the rest of the ladies? You know, what are they up to? What are they doing? It's, it's, it's a question in my mind. Like, I do that with the dudes, too. I'm like, you know, I wonder what such and such is doing right now. And, you know, just that and the third. Because it's, it's refreshing to see their faces. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's the best way for me to put it. It's refreshing to see their faces every once in a while. Because now... You have a fresh when you have a fresh new face. That means you have fresh new stuff going on, even if it's just for a match. You know, it's just it's that's just how to me pretty much things go. So I have to honestly say I am. Oh, oh, Keith, that I knew it was something that I almost forgot to talk about, mm. and I I hate to have stopped myself in the middle of a sentence, but man, I just remembered. So about. Randy Orton pledging his allegiance to Bray Wyatt. Yeah, yeah. No, um, we we were about to leave SmackDown without talking about uh, that. Here's the thing: we got seven weeks to WrestleMania, right? That is correct. So we got to stretch this Kool Aid. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, look, you try to make a picture, you only got a pack and a half. You know what I'm saying? Somehow this Kool Aid got to stretch, so gotta make. you got you got to make. It. So we we've, we've gave Bray the title. Bray got the title at the last pay per view, so that happened. Boom, Randy won right. Royal Rumble. Boom, it's in place. I think he pledges his allegiance, and I think for the next two to three weeks, Randy's is a, a loyal soldier, right? Right. Now, that's going to leave Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon scrambling to try to figure out what to do next. And they're going to be talking about alternatives for a main event. What's going to happen is, at some point, something's going to happen, and Randy's going to snap, and he's going to RKO Bray Wyatt. Of course. It may come, but I think they're going to set up a build-up. It might not even come... Okay, on oh, Thursday SmackDown, expect to see maybe a tag match with both of them, right? 
Right. But something haywire is going to happen in the tag match. And it's going to look like an accident. Right. And, and they're going to sell it as an accident. Then in about two weeks, they're going to do something else and it's going to be sold as an accident. Right? But right. the tensions go about and somebody's going to be looking at each other sideways. Then the real thing goes down at about the four week mark where we're halfway in between. Boom, RKO to Bray Wyatt. Then you know what the, the promo's going to be? Hey, man, this was my plan all along. Right. I joined the Wyatt family. Why? Because, hey, they was kicking me and Kane's ass. And I didn't have nobody to, to fight the Wyatt family with. So I took it down from the inside. Y'all were dangerous. Y'all were a menace. And I took you down from the inside. He will be a heel. Uh, an instant heel. You ain't gotta look around. Right. But. But remember, he's a snake. Yeah. yeah. But, um. Bray, I think, will be embraced as the baby face. Which he already is, kind of, anyway. So, right. I think it all's gonna work out. And then Bray got to defend the honor of not only the title but of the Wyatt family. Uh, will him be Rose? Rene resolve this? No, no, no. Nope. So, but yeah, this is uh, gonna be exciting. Yeah. This is gonna be side side. Yeah, I was it, thoroughly confused though. Yeah, lay it out the creative. Yeah, no. He had to do that on Tuesday because, like I said, he can't just immediately be like, all right, cool, we're going to fight. You know what I mean? Right. And they have no exactly. tension whatsoever between the two of them. They would have destroyed it. It would have destroyed it. If anything. It would have been so bad. Like, first, okay, this is where it goes. Randy gets Luke Harper kicked out the family, right? Right. Because that right. kind of happened. We're, and I don't even know if he get him kicked out or if it's just that Luke Harper was like a jealous sibling almost. Like, hey, man, this new kid come along and I'm just kicked to the side the day one OG. Yeah, that's pretty much what ended up happening. Right. To me, I feel like the way that they portray it is Luke is not necessarily like out of the Wyatt family. It's just I feel like he they're just having a fight right now. You know? Right. Like... He he's not he still is con- he still considers himself a member. It's just that he's he's pissed off at the both uh, he's pissed off at Bray and he and he can't stand Randy. So he's going to beat him beat at least one of them up every chance he get and it's and he's targeting Bray because he allowed this to happen in the first place, you know? Right. So that's just how I kind of see it. Like cuz you still see him kind of do Wyatt things. So it's not, to me, I don't feel like it's like over, over, you know. And there won't really necessarily need to be like this uh, whole entire reuniting situation. It would just be kind of slight because of the simple fact that, uh it's not completely it hasn't been completely destroyed in the first place so um I, the whole sibling rival the whole sibling thing it it sounds about right to me and I like the way they, they're handling Luke with this entire Wyatt situation you know what I'm saying yeah. because he's not getting lost in the He's not getting mm-hmm. lost in the background or nowhere shuffle, or yeah. anything like that. No. Right. So. I mean, I will say this. They've done a good job with people not getting lost in the shuffle. Uh, right. I think the SmackDown brand has put on some excellent work. Uh, the Raw brand is about to turn it up. Uh, the breakup of KO is already kind of, you know what I mean, chronically mm-hmm. going, which right. also... They're talking breakups. They already did the big TV breakup, so somebody else got to wait. Uh, but yeah, I think the chips are in the right place. I think we are on solid foot heading to WrestleMania. Yeah, 
and I, I'm glad to because it is easy to for storylines to get skewed up or to hit a left right. like a hard left and then the next thing you know you're looking like okay what the fuck just happened Right. Um, so I think fast lane to me for Raw is definitely going to kind of bring it home for the whole every every single WrestleMania storyline that's set up to happen. Right. And then for SmackDown, I feel like we're already in the rough beginnings of all of that happening. Right. Right. So it's it's definitely to me. I feel like now. I have to give my applause to creative because I I definitely feel like they are definitely for once on the right track when it comes to the biggest stage of them all, you know. So I'm excited about that entire situation, like both of them. And I hope that they don't. Uh, I, I really hope they don't screw this up, Keith. Like, <laughs> like I'm seriously hoping they don't screw this up, you know. And we we're just sitting here talking about Raw uh, SmackDown. Like we haven't even talked about um, Two or Five Live or NXT because you know with Raw becomes a takeover, and we definitely gonna have to get ready for that too. And right. Bobby Roode is our NXT champion right now, so you know I'm way too excited about that. Um, but we'll see. Hmm. Well, definitely, we'll see what happens, and um, I, I, of course, people, you just have to keep watching. You do, because if you don't, man, you're gonna miss a lot of shit. I just had to break down everything to one of my coworkers yesterday, like literally. Yeah, I mean, overall, oh, like hmm. I said, hours and hours of content uh, for my new Japan heads. But uh, I, I would be remiss not to mention. Uh, Sunday, if you are up in the middle of the night, uh, CMLL is broadcasted from Arena, Mexico. Uh, this will be strictly Japanese commentary. There will be no English commentary for that event. Uh, next Sunday, Sunday and Monday, uh, Rising Honor, their sh- co-show with Ring of Honor will be taking place over at uh, the famous uh, Karukin Hall. Uh, that one will have English commentary. So I would check out the listings for that. Um, they both can be found on New Japan World. So I just, you know, because we leave out a lot of stuff. Peace. We it's hard to talk about all of it. Um, oh. Do you know TNA popped a really good rate this week? I heard. I uh, heard they're making almost a like good a turnover right now. Almost a hundred thousand extra eyeballs turned in to see uh, the Hardys take on the Wolves in the main event. In a street fight, but I mean, if you got teams like <laughs> that awesome. working, it's it's you got you got to get eyes. You know what I mean? Right. So, hey man, I heard they're turning. I really have heard. I've read that they're turning over a new leaf. And to tell the truth, people, if you are you, if you go on YouTube, you can find these impact episodes, like because you know people actually still post them. Yeah. So, I find them. I. I found the latest one really recently. I don't think it was like their last one. I think it might have been the one before it. But mm. yeah, I saw all hour and thirty minutes of it. So I'm like, yeah, I need to watch this. Mm. And it's you know what's interesting to see Brandy Rhodes in wrestling attire like that shit is still it's still mind boggling to me. I'm like, oh man. Like, she posted on, I don't, for any of you that don't follow Brandy Rose on Instagram, right, she posted a video of her husband, Cody, like, uh, what, of her husband, Cody, pretty much putting her in his signature, and like, oh, the cross, it, <laughs> it was so funny, like, there was this whole powder scene during one of their, one of his matches, Right. Where he was hitting the face with some baby powder, and right. so she hops in the ring, and she's like all in the other wrestler's face, and the next thing you know, he puts her in, he puts her, he sets her up and and hits her with the crossroads. I was like, oh shit! Like it was awesome. 
So she posted this on her own Instagram, and this is the kind of stuff that you can see, you know, other than her posting uh, her most recent post on her fashion blogs and her shopping blogs, you know, things like that. So, right. um, but to see her in like a full wrestling gear with the boots and everything. Uh, it's still kind of catching on to me. Like yeah. I'm, I'm still getting used to that. Yeah, I remember in the WWF, no. she did not wrestle. Uh, that was not her. No, gig. she was. She was she like was JoJo style. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like so, no, that was not her gig. Like, but, but she, that's what she does now. So, uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, right. With that, Keish, I think we're gonna put a pin in this. And all right. We will be back next week uh, to talk about, I don't know, something about something. And then the week after, we got a fast lane preview. So, uh, of course. With that, man, I'm going to say. Have a great weekend, people. Yeah. We Enjoy are out. it. Peace. Bye.